Late May. The lino flowers that painted Trista's spring fields had faded, replaced by lush greenery and a refreshing breeze. With the trials of last month's field study behind us, we found ourselves caught up once more in the bustle of school life. Both our combat training and academic studies continued to become more and more demanding, but May also heralded the beginning of specialist classes more befitting a military academy. The Orbal Revolution 50 years ago changed the way wars were fought forever. There are a number of reasons for this fundamental change, but four factors in particular that I would argue to be the most important. The first is the invention of Orbal guns, cannons, and other weaponry. The increased accuracy of these weapons, as well as their ease of maintenance and manufacture, instantly rendered all other firearms obsolete. The second factor is the associated mechanization of the military. Orbital technology led to the formation of armored divisions made up of tanks and armored cars. The impact this new kind of tactical unit had on the battlefield, with its enhanced offense, defense, and mobility, cannot be overstated. The third factor is the invention of airships. Warships that rely on the gravity manipulation ability of a flight field to remain in the air simply did not exist before the revolution. The sudden addition of a whole new dimension to war, the sky, made countless new strategies viable that were previously unimaginable. And the last factor is the creation of an entirely new practical science, which may be the biggest, most important change of all. Without orbital technology, such a concept would scarcely even have been conceivable. But now we'd be virtually crippled without it. Reen Schwarzer, can you tell the class what that new scientific breakthrough was? less obvious they're talking about us? I mean, seriously. It stands to reason they'd be curious about our class. It's hard to blame them for that, at least. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've wished that plenty already. <laughs> Likewise. I was lost at first, but it's slowly beginning to make more sense. Well, it is cutting-edge technology here in Erebonia, so I think most people are confused until they've gotten used to it. Machias and Yusus both picked it up surprisingly quickly, though. You 
Jesus also seems to get the hang of things far quicker than most people, even if he's not interested in them at all. Which probably just adds insult to injury for Machias. They were. At one point, things almost took a violent turn. We were able to hold them back, but I don't think we could have kept them under control for long if Instructor Sarah hadn't arrived. <sighs> we really need to do something about them, but I have no idea what. Reen Schwarzer. Huh? Isn't he from Class 1? That is correct. My full name is Patrick T. High Arms. I don't believe I need to say anything more than that. What? Are they prestigious? About as prestigious as they come! The High Armsies are one of the four great houses! Though they're slightly lower in rank than the Albareas. <laughs> I'm sorry, I meant no offense. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I didn't come here to talk to commoners or foreigners. I came to bring gladsome tidings to you, Reen Schwarzer. I am generously extending you welcome to make use of the accommodations on the third floor of the Student Union Building. The third floor? That's where the Noble Salon is, right? Your father may be a mere baron, but that still makes you a noble. And though you've had the misfortune of sharing a class with this riffraff, I have decided to use my good name as a member of the High Arms family to afford you the privilege of joining us. I do hope you appreciate it. This hardly strikes me as the best place to be recruiting new members. Uh, Yusus Alberea? I wasn't aware the third son of the High Arms family counted playing factions among his hobbies. If you wished for company in the salon, should you not have come to me first? You? You've been invited countless times. You, you simply choose not to come. Despite there being no shortage of second years practically begging for your company. I have no interest. Hm. Suit yourself, then. But you, Schwarzer, make sure you think long and hard about this. If you care about your future, you need to start thinking about the connections you're making and the sides you're taking. <sighs> He's certainly not shy. I wasn't trying to help you. But I did cause you some trouble during last month's field study, so... No. That's all. Last month's field study? Is he...? Ah, so he feels partially responsible for his family's actions then. He must have been looking for a way to apologize to you. Huh, I guess he has a nice side after all. All rise, bow.
Since when was it any of your business what I choose to do after class? Not especially. It's actually my fault for being deceived so easily in the first place. Let's just say I haven't got a drop of noble blood in my veins. So I guess we're all in equal standing here. Save your breath. Whether you're a noble or not is beside the point. The bottom line is you lied to me, and I simply cannot trust those who lie. That's all there is to it. Ah! I'm... I'm sorry. No, please, think nothing of it. Oh, um, am I intruding? I accidentally left one of my textbooks in my desk, so I came back to fetch it. Ah, here it is. Take a look. Oh, <laughs> it's not for me. I promised to help Fee with her math studies. I found this at a bookshop in town and thought it might be of some use to her. Which reminds me, I should really be going. I'm sure she's waiting for me by now. I'll see you later, Reen. And don't worry. I'm sure Machias doesn't hate you or anything. If you can find some way of making him realize how you feel, I'm sure he'll understand. It's just getting through to him that might be tough. <laughs>